Stephen is joining Mr. Naylor on the hunt for persistent truant, Eloise. With Eloise, she tries it on a lot, and it, sometimes she gets your head spinning. Eloise has finally arrived at school. You want to go in here? What's that mean? Oh, she's an What's it for? Can this hurry up? I have a nail appointment soon. You meant to start school, but I think it's like 10 to 9 or quarter to. I don't know. I don't even know. I like being put in a room by myself. I don't think it's fair that I get told off, actually. It's actually, no, it's not. Because no one else gets told off. Oh, wait, there's Mr. Naylor, bye. She's just a pain in the ass. That's what she is. <laughs> Finally. Do you know how many times you've been late this time? How many? 19. And do you know what, Eloise? It's not about you being late 19 times. You know how late you actually are. Would you rather me be late or be off? Uh, answer my question. What was the question? I just hate school. School is horrible. I just get trapped in rooms like this. But you know, if yeah. you hadn't come in late, we wouldn't be sitting here, would we? So, who's really being inconvenienced here? I can't help her. I think Miss, she's missed a lot of lessons. Get her going. OK, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. My attendance isn't important. We're still learning nothing in school. So. I haven't learned nothing in this whole life of school. Stephen checks that 15-year-old Eloise has made it into school. You need to be moved to the back of the class again. It's not just me talking, no. And so, what does the fact that Eloise? I'm a victim of this. Of no, again? I don't, because I haven't done nothing because everyone else was talking. Can I go to the toilet now? Hello, miss. Hello. When you're back from the toilet, can we have a chat? I'm not even going to them, I'm just going for a walk. Oh, OK. Well, let's go find somewhere. I think I'm quite clever. But everyone else doesn't, but I do. I wasn't such a good kid in school. Did you not? No, I, I had a, an attendance issue. So oh, I just, same. I really struggled to come because I found it boring and uninteresting and I was falling asleep and I'm stuff. I'm like that. Yeah. Do you dread it a little bit? Yeah. What do you dread about it? Getting up early. I'd rather just come in at like 11. Because mm -hmm. then I can have a bit of a sleep and not get up till like half nine. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do when you leave school? A hairdresser. You want to be a hairdresser? Yeah, I want to be successful. I don't want to be like smack heads. It's not my dream. Are you looking forward to leaving school? I'm going to miss coming and being mouthy. So you enjoy being mouthy? Yeah. It's just me. I've always been like that. Mm -hmm. so. I'll walk you back to your lesson. Here's my take on Eloise. I, I'm baffled by her lack of respect for authority and her like brazen, just I'm doing everything my way. You almost got to respect it a, a little bit, you know? You know, I've got 19 leads this term. In fact, I respect the honesty. I respect who she is. <laughs> I worry about Eloise, I've got to be honest, because oh, she's a fiery little character and she's quite clever, really, but you've got to watch out for it. Really? So we put in place at the minute a hairdressing uh, placement just on a Tuesday. It's a motivation thing because she loves hairdressing. Head of Year 11 support, Mr Naylor, has asked Stephen to check in on Eloise's work placement. You know, there's a lot of things that I don't think will define you. I think I don't think grades will necessarily define you, but I do think no matter what career you pursue, hard work and self-discipline are defining traits. I'm hoping that Eloise can demonstrate those two things. Uh, um, yeah. I'm kind of, Amy. I'm. Uh, I've been, been working with Eloise. Yeah. How is she? She's great. She started off a bit nervous, but she's just getting into a swing a little bit now. And quite a shift coming from school mm -hmm. to a full working day. And um, her attitude's good? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, she started okay. chatting to the clients and things like that, so it's nice. Eloise is expected at the salon at 9 o'clock. She's about almost 10 minutes late now. How can I help? OK, no problem. I hope she gets better soon. OK, bye. Bye. 
So Eloise is ill today. She said this is a one-off. It won't happen again. Thank you again, Putin. Thank you. Thanks. See you. I don't know if Eloise is actually sick or not, but I think back to when I was Eloise's age and um, did I do things like this? Did I no-show for things that I was meant to attend because I thought they were hard? Um, I did. And um, I didn't just do that once, I did that over and over again. What happened this morning? How come you didn't uh, make it there? Because I couldn't, I didn't want to. Do you know who did make it there? Who? Me. Did ya? No, you didn't. Yes, I did. And I met Amy. Amy? What did she say? She said you were wonderful. She was very, very complimentary. Imagine if they found out that you weren't sick. <gasps> so it's disappointing to, that you didn't show up. I thought you were going to be there. Be honest with me, right? Was that part of the issue? Is you woke up late and then you thought, I don't want to go there and be yeah. late. But you got here on time, didn't you? No, I got here for like 20 to 10. Say, if I showed up there for 20 to 10. I think you're a little bit scared of them. I'm not scared. Oh, you don't want to be scared of Yeah, you are. I'm and not, you should I be just... as well, because it's different. Here you can gob off. Yeah. There, if you gob off, you're finished, aren't you? And that's what the world is like. Set five alarms. Five alarms. Set loads of alarms, OK? I can't do that. Why not? Because it'll wake the cat up. Because it'll wake the cat up. <laughs> yeah. The cat can go back to sleep. The cat hasn't got a job, OK? Well, you better go back upstairs. She's someone that stands the greatest chance of either being a really productive member of society or the total opposite. Home visits are a key part of the support worker role. I want to find out what it is that's making Eloise behave the way she has been in school. I know very little about her home life and her upbringing. Eloise lives with her big sister, Mandy. Hey, uh, Cliff, nice to meet you. Hi, Cliff. Mandy, nice, right? Yeah, I'm Mandy, Eloise's sister. Oh, amazing. Do you think she likes school? I know she doesn't. She enjoys the arguments with the teachers more than the actual lessons. Why is that? I don't know. She's always been like that. She's always had to get the last word in and that's so. Do you see much of yourself in Eloise? I see a lot of my mum in her. Do you see her often? She passed away. Oh, right, OK. In, like, seven years ago. OK. OK, she would have been... Like, seven. Six, six years old, yeah. Seven, I think. Yeah. OK. I don't have a weakness, I don't think. Nothing really makes me sad. So, I don't think I have a weakness. She had an ulcer in her lung, and it burst, and... They managed to resuscitate her. But um, they actually said to me, because the oxygen hasn't gone to her head, there's brain damage for her. So, mm. turn the machine off. She passed away the day after Boxing Day. Hmm. Yeah, tough. How old were you when that, when that, when you took care of Eloise? 17. 17? I was 17. You must have a lot of respect for Mandy. Cause All the girl teachers in the school, so she's amazing. She is amazing. <laughs> Could you do that? No, I'm 26 now. I still can't take care of myself. I lost <laughs> one of my shoes this morning. Because I've got foster care of her, I didn't want that to be a stigma on her. I wanted to know that she's a strong, independent person mm -hmm. and she can go out there and do good in life. If you had a magic wand, how would you make your future look? Well, I don't know. You can't just plan your future. So you think you've got no control over where you're going to go? No. You can't, like, say, oh, this is going to happen then, that's going to happen then, because then nothing could happen. I think you can say, I'm no, going to be a millionaire, and you then can't. you can work hard for a couple of years and make that happen. No, you can't. Bad things definitely happen. Yeah. But my honest opinion is that you've got potential to be whatever you want to be. Can you make me a promise to prove your self-discipline and be on time? I'll try. Thank you, promise. Okay, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check. See ya. Bye. Ooh. So, blimey, um, she's clearly gone through a lot. It completes a puzzle. You know, seeing someone in school sat in their uniform is 
only part of the story. Getting to see them at home and hear about their story, for me, is the other part. I've been on time all week. Have you actually? Yeah, and I went to replacements on Tuesday. Would you like me now? I do. Are they real? Yeah, they're real. They're real? Wow. Yeah. They grow them quick. I know, they've grown so quick. Mm -hmm. And they grew with glitter on. And diamonds. Mine are just... You need your nails done. I know, I need mine done. I've been busy. You really do. Yeah, cool. You better go to the next you'll be late. I'm going to show up their hairdressers on Tuesday. OK. Eloise has a number of traits which I think in school might be holding her back, but in later life might contribute to her success. Her confidence, her strength of mind. You know, wanting to have it her way. Um, these are all traits of successful people. Successful entrepreneur Stephen Bartlett has come to the end of his time working undercover at Little and High. The reason why I want to help Eloise is because she's put up the biggest shield and wears the most impenetrable mask. But I see the little girl under there that lost their mum. Um, I can't imagine what that must be like. Hi, doll. You right? How are you? Hello. Hi, Hi Claire. Feeling all right? Yeah, really good. Yeah. Really good. Love the clothes. Do you like it? Yeah. And the hat. Slightly different, isn't it? I do have a bit of a confession to make. My name isn't Cliff. What's your name? My name is Stephen. So what, what are you? A social worker? I'm not a social worker. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I run and own one of the biggest social media companies in, in the world. I live and work in New York City. Wow. Wow. This is probably the first time in my life I've had nothing to say about something. I can't believe this, you know. Here's the thing. You thought, in life, things just kind of happen to you. Mm -hmm. It's not how it works. And you can literally decide who you want to become and become that person. And if you tell me you can't, you're looking at the proof. I think, I think you have a lot of potential. And I think with hairdressing in particular, you've, you've got a bit of a passion there. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I've lined up a, one of the top salons in Liverpool and they are going to give you one-on-one -on -one experience teaching you how to do hair cutting, styling, makeup and all those things. Should love all that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm actually so in shock. Oh. I can't believe this. I've wanted to be a hairdresser since I was like three. Thank you a lot. Maybe I might see you one day strolling down the street in New York. And, and stay in touch, okay? I will. Message me. Behave yourself, okay? Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. -bye.